MP for Mansfield. Hi, Ben. Thanks for joining us on the programme this morning. Your thoughts on last night's vote? Morning, Kay. Um, disappointing in terms of the numbers, of course, although uh, the Prime Minister did win the vote. Uh, I uh, voted for him. I think it's important uh, that my constituency in places like Mansfield, uh, which has been at the forefront of the government's agenda for the first time probably ever, um, stays that way. And, and I think that levelling up agenda comes from Boris. Uh, the only way that it, it, you can guarantee that that agenda stays in place is, is with him in place. Why do you think so many of your colleagues disagreed? Well, I think, um, as the Prime Minister said uh, last night and this morning, you know, he's never had the, the unanimous support of, of the old Conservative MPs. I don't think really in, in the modern kind of climate with broad church political parties, anybody ever really does. Um, and there's some, been some questions, there have been some mistakes. I think he's held his hands up to those. Uh, and there's a choice whether we take that apology uh, at face value, whether we accept that he has already made changes in number 10, which uh, truthfully has been much better in recent months, uh, in, in my experience. Um, whether we choose to back him to get on with it now or whether we choose to spend the next few months falling out about who the next leader should be, uh, I would like to see delivery and, and that's why I think he needs to stay. Yeah, but he was abs I mean, it's not as if it's a few that voted against him. First of all, he had to face a leadership election and any leader that has had to face a leadership election has gone, either in the short or medium term. More than that, um, it looks like 75% of those not on the payroll, if you will, uh, backbenchers not on the, on the, or backbenchers, um, did not vote in favour of this Prime Minister. Oh, well, that's guesswork, really. It's impossible to know who um, uh, payroll or non payroll voted in which particular way. I wouldn't so do you think that. that some minister... Sorry, let me just pick you up on that. Do you think that some who are ministers or cabinet members would have voted to get rid of the prime minister? Is that what you're saying? I think when you look at the numbers, that's, that's inevitable um, uh, in reality. But obviously, it's a secret ballot, and we'll probably never know uh, the exact uh, kind of divide there. But um, as it's the same situation now as it was yesterday. We can choose to now rally behind the Prime Minister, who's won uh, the confidence vote, and, and try to deliver the, the policy agenda that he set out, or we can choose to carry on falling out. But I think you, you pointed back to previous Prime Ministers there. I mean, Theresa May, obviously, um, won a confidence vote and then left. But that was a very different scenario where Parliament was in stasis. She had no majority. She couldn't get a Brexit policy over the line or any policy over the line. Uh, and it couldn't continue. Boris is not in that position. He's got a healthy majority in Parliament. Uh, and if we get together, we can continue to deliver the agenda that he's laid out. Yeah, what about the fact that you look likely to lose another two by-elections? If that happens, would you still have full confidence in the Prime Minister? Governments lose by-elections. That's not new. I think we've got high expectations because um, Boris Johnson's government has won a couple. That's not the norm. That's that's um, Normally, it's the case that governments get hammered in by-elections. Um, they're going to be incredibly difficult over the next few months because uh, we're in kind of difficult times and because of this controversy. But um, I don't think you can live and die by that. As I say, the norm is that government don't win those things. What will impact on the next general election and where my constituents will cast their vote is going to be about the outcomes that they see from four years of Conservative government, whether they see that their area has been levelled up, has been invested in or not. It's not going to be about um, actions around parties that by then will have taken place four years ago. Um, we've got to prove a point and the Prime Minister has to prove a point, but we need to back him to do that. Is there, is there anything this Prime Minister can do that means he won't, he won't enjoy your support? Well, clearly, he's got to turn it around. We all know that he's made mistakes and that things in Number 10 have not been perfect uh, at all. Uh, I think, as I say, it's a case of um, do you accept his apology, uh, give him the benefit of the doubt, because he has started to change things already. You can already see outcomes of that in the way that Number 10 works and the relationships that Number 10 has um, with the wider party. That's been much better. Um, clearly, it has got to change and, and he has got to move forward and, and continue to deliver that agenda. He's got to bring people back on board within the party as much as he can. Um, so there's a test for him now, but uh, we can choose, as I say, to either back him to try and do that or to spend the next three or four months falling out about who the Prime Minister should be, and I don't think that's helpful for anybody. How are you feeling about this blue-on-blue -blue action and Nadine Doris um, getting into an unseemly spat with um, Jeremy Hunt? Well, it's never helpful. Um, politicians talking to politicians about other politicians is never quite what uh, really rings true with the public or what they want to see as um, tackling or working on. We've got to get back to the agenda that matters. That's about investment in communities. It's about um, raising people's living standards, tackling the cost of living. Um, we need to be able to focus on that. And you pointed yourself uh, earlier on to international uh, challenges and crises where we need strong um, political leadership for, for the UK. So we do need to stop falling out. We need to get back to the day job. 
Um, that would be much easier if um, if we can draw a line and move on. Unfortunately, the result was closer uh, than we would have liked, and maybe that's difficult. But uh, I think it's incumbent on all of us now, having had that vote and had the result, to get behind the PM and help him to deliver. Do you acknowledge that uh, the Prime Minister doesn't seem to have to enjoy the public support that he once did? It was a thumping majority, as you say, at the last election. But, you know, I was there at St Paul's uh, on Friday and there was a lot of booing for the PM. Well, politics is a, a divisive game these days, isn't it, unfortunately? It's not a, a particularly nice environment, as, as you know uh, equally well. I think the, um, it is a, a difficult time to be a politician and to be a leader because you cannot please everybody, and it can be something of a binary debate, uh, can't it? You know, everybody's either good or evil, and there's no grey in between, and that's not right or fair. Um, but it's not healthy uh, either to, to be in that situation where things are so controversial and divisive. Part of turning that around is, um, I think, the PM now seeking to bridge the gap, to, to bring the party back together as much as possible. I'm sure that's what he will try to do. Um, but that's that's not easy. Uh, e equally, on the local level, you know, truth be told, I get as many emails saying he absolutely must stay as I do saying he must go. It's not a... a a clear direction one way or the other in my constituency, as far as I can tell. Um, just like Brexit, like COVID and many other issues we've faced over recent years, it's, it's very divided in terms of people's views. Um, so I don't okay. think there's a Good clear... Good to talk to you. Thanks for joining us on the programme this morning. Thanks a lot.